when you're playing a bad guy, I don't think that twisting the mustache and being like, I want to be evil today. I don't think they think that. I think they think I want to survive like anybody else today and I'm just making some bad choices to do so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome to Scream <laughs> Dreams, the nightmares that shaped us. I'm Catherine Corcoran. And I'm James A. Janice. And joining us today is Doug Jones. Well, hey, hi, hi, hi. Hi. Hey. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my God! Every time you walk into a room, it just like lights up. We talk about nightlights on this show. I you, have batteries. You, do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> no, truly, I don't think I've ever met someone who like is mm-hmm. as like sweet and warm and like just warm. welcoming to everybody. Well, bless you. Thank, well, thank you. Uh, gosh, I didn't deserve yeah. that, but thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. it's, it's true. Do you do you have nightmares? I feel like you can't possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had nightmares, like, you know, scary things uh, since I was a kid. Really? But I can tell you in detail what that was. Yeah. Oh, Do you want to hear right now? now? They were yeah. that traumatic? Well, for some reason. Okay, when I was a kid, uh, I was one of four, uh, the youngest of four boys, and we all had to rotate on washing dishes, and I absolutely hated it, right? But mom was like, mm, it's your night. So I would be like, uh, I'd stand at the sink for, I would, it took me hours, because I was like, I don't want to do this. So I, this recurring dream I had, it was more than once, was this woman who did not look like my mom at all. She had like blonde 50s hair and like heavily made up with bright red lipstick and bright red long fingernails. And so I would be in, in my dream walking around a corner and there she would be, this woman dipping her hands in and out of dishwater going, <laughs> making that noise. I have no idea why, but I wake up going, nah, okay, what, 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 right? So, um, <clears throat> sorry about that, sorry about that. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So so she kept haunting me in my dreams, this woman, and I don't know what the threat was, the threat, I don't know, I think the threat of- uh, Getting pruny fingers from doing the dishes? Pruny fingers, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and also also the not talking. She, was, she wasn't she was saying, that's what, that's what scares me, is um, when a figure is, is maybe trying to communicate and not doing it not not using words mm-hmm. and and um and me them not understanding me either when i'm using words <laughs> so i was like what are you doing so that that's like we're not we're not we're not meeting at the same place <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah uh and that's kind of a little bit frightening you know uh um because the the unpredictability of it. Where, what does she really want? Why is she here? And what are those fingernails going to, are those going to be in my eyeballs soon? I don't know. That's funny considering that your career, you've played a lot of- A lot of non-speaking characters. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Sometimes where communication is the central focus of the film. And you can communicate non-verbally. I, I, mm-hmm. mean, I, believe, I believe we're doing it right now, actually, mm-hmm. with our posture and our gestures and our facial expressions. We're doing a lot of communicating yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. with, Oh, oh, what happened? We just need to pull the mic away a little bit. Oh, oh I yeah. blasted it too much? No, well, it's just it's <laughs> catching too much of your breath. Uh, it's like a, a front facing, so you don't really have to speak well, the, into it. Oh, so it's a different, it's different mic than, than ours. You have yeah. to, it's actually it, yeah. a better I moved it in like to go. Yeah. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah. That is my it's tendency totally as well. It's totally fine. It's just, it, is, it, is this it'll right? sound unclear. Is that the better rate? Uh, yeah, that's definitely better. So just rephrase wherever you were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, that's interesting since in your career you've played a lot of non-speaking creatures, sometimes right. where the inability to communicate is the central theme of the movie. Right, and yet uh, those characters do c- communicate. Well, let's take The Shape of Water, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a, a mute janitor lady mm-hmm. who was not using verbal dialogue, and you had the monster from the uh, the Amazon River in South America uh, not communicating verbally, but they yet they fell in love with each other. So they had to communicate somehow, didn't they? So I believe I believe that more than half of our communication is the visuals we give off. Because you, you can say you can say a line of dialogue, you can say uh, get out in different ways. You can say oh get out, or you can say get out, right? And that's completely different meaning yeah. for, for the same words, right? So so much is communicated visually. Um, but as a kid in a dream, I didn't know that yet. I just thought, she's not talking to them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. What is your process like in going into something no- non-verbally? How how do you find the language of that character? I'm sure you're asked this all the time, but. Mm, I, I don't hate answering it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't know, it's, it's a matter of uh, uh, a writer and a script are my, my beginning point. Like mm-hmm. where does my character fit into the story and what story am I telling? And, uh, who am I interacting with and how? Um, and uh, 
so when you um, <clears throat> I, I, I believe that 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 uh, things like touch mm -hmm. and um, and again the visuals the posture the facial expression the the lean or the or the recoil all speak so mm -hmm. much so I'm gonna go back to the shape of water I'm sorry <laughs> but but, it's, but it, it's rare that I come up against another mute character mm -hmm. um, and uh, so the two of us uh, something Guillermo del Toro did that was really super smart. Uh, we had a dance number in that movie. It was a fantasy in her mind that she was in a black and white MGM musical with, with me, and we're like Fred and Ginger dancing. But I'm in a fish suit. <laughs> Rather unique. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, so we had dance rehearsals for about three weeks before the film started, started shooting. And so during that time, Sally and I had a, had a chance to get to know each other and bond. And we were both sharing our fears about this movie. Like it's 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 so important. It's like it's Oscar worthy. We know that going in. It's important to Guillermo del Toro. And I've worked with him you know, on five movies before that, so I didn't want to let him down, and she didn't want to let him down. We we're both like having imposter syndrome. <laughs> we went through a lot together during those dance rehearsals. We laughed, we cried, we sat, and and we also learned a dance number. And so uh, so trust was built during that time. When you're doing dips and lifts with somebody in a dance number. Trust has to be there anyway, mm -hmm. but then emotionally, and, and you know, she could even confide in me like, a, you know, something went wrong with dentally. With I, I need to go see a dentist today. I'm like, oh, she, and she was like whispering to you, what should I do? I'm like, okay. So back and forth and back and forth. And then by the time the camera rolled on us, we had a relationship in place and trust in place. And so that I hopefully, hopefully that communicated. Uh, I, uh, the touch thing I mentioned. Um, words, we can deceive with words, but when you touch someone or hug someone or you can tell you can tell there uh, you can't lie with touch I don't think as nearly as much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to be really good at it to lie yeah. so your touch really does in indicate a lot and so uh, so those two characters fell in love with their visuals and with their touch mm -hmm. Would you describe yourself as like a touchy person? Oh, good gosh, Because I've already yes. noticed in <laughs> yes. our conversations today, you've already like reached out and grabbed people. I remember yeah. uh, my my now wife, Chelsea, and I met you uh, briefly on the floor of Comic-Con back in like 2015 or something. Oh, yeah. And you were just kind of walking around on the floor yeah. and uh, we saw you and we're like, oh, that's Doug Jones. And we have a picture with you and the picture, we're, our faces are like right up next to each other. You just yeah, like yeah, smooth, yeah. smooth, smooth our boogie, face boogie, together. Boogie, boogie. Yep, okay, yeah. It's like, hey, whenever I show that picture, people are like, oh, are you guys really good friends? It's like, no, we just randomly met that day. He's just <laughs> such a warm. We are now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's so grounding. Like I, I, I think every time I've met you, you've just grabbed my hand with both of your hands. And I just, <laughs> ought to, like, I think especially in the convention scene, it can be kind of daunting for a lot of us at, at any point when you're coming in because you're just around these incredible artists that you've admired who are your peers, but you, imposter syndrome, you never feel like no, that. I no, I don't belong no here, all that, yeah. And so it's just kind of, at least for me, I get uh, Jenna, our friend who you know, uh, Jenna Canal, who you know mm -hmm. very, very well. Um, she jokes, uh, Catherine will always be late because she's in her room pacing. She's so nervous. And oh, it's true. I, oh. I To come down, I get so nervous. But every time I've seen you at a convention, you just like bring me right down to like, <laughs> oh. you do, you do. You just ground it. I'm sure you're like that for everybody. And I think it is the oh. touch. Well, thank you. I, that's very, very sweet of you. I was never, I wasn't always a hugger. Really? Um, yeah. When my dad passed away when I was 18 years old, so it was kind of early. He was only 50. Oh, man. And um, and I, again, had been kind of a geeky kid that didn't, you know, didn't feel like I belonged. I was made fun of a lot. So I had to develop a sense of humor. So it was all about this and then run away. Mm -hmm. uh, and when my dad passed away, my three older brothers and I all hugged on for the first time in ever wow. <laughs> at his funeral. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, this feels right. I am a hugger and I have my love language is touch. My number one is touch. So I thought, I'm going to keep this in, in my act <laughs> from, now, from <laughs> yeah. now on. And uh, so I became a hugger that day and have never stopped since. I, from 18 years old till now I'm 63. So it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm also a hugger. And just like when I'm talking to people, I really like to, you know, just like connect with them. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you ever start second guessing yourself, especially in like recent years where there's more of a conversation about like consent and oh, maybe gosh, misinterpreted yes. touches mm -hmm. and stuff like that? I, when, I never want to be that guy. Exactly. That you never want to be misinterpreted, right. even though you just mean it from probably like a friendly, you know, a humanist level of connecting person to person. Right, right. Well, yeah. especially at, at the convention, doing the convention circuit, meeting mm -hmm. meeting fans, there's a line of people that are waiting for you. And I, I, I hug everybody, but I but now I've taken to saying, is it okay if I hug you? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then they'll get consent. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a easily fixed. Yeah. 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 I, I love, though, that you you are so aware of it. I think I think 
you are aware of boundaries and consent more than any not to like throw a lot of straight men under the <laughs> bus but like you are i i think like in our friendship i i really admire you james in that you're always like checking in and uh for women and and marginalized people and making sure that you know we feel seen and respected it's it's huge i i think I would never second guess a touch from you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm glad. Thank you. It's nice to hear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah and same yeah, with yeah. you. I think there's just certain people who just give off this like you know it's genuine, no. but that is you're you're talking about nonverbal communication. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, have you heard that concept of the five love languages? Like, mm -hmm. There's yeah. a physical touch. There's words of affirmation, gift giving, and receiving favors or uh, 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 acts of service. Yes, acts of service. Like yeah. you know, I love you. I'll wash the car, kind uh -huh. of a thing. <laughs> and then also, and um, uh, quality time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And and people different. I, I'm glad I when I saw the, that book, I was like, oh my gosh, this makes perfect sense because not everybody speaks the same languages as their number one, you know, communicator for, yeah. for love. And so you, you can feel rejected by somebody when you've reached out in a certain way with, with one of those languages that they don't really speak as well. Yeah, so you're something like, oh, that they you prioritize me. where it's like, oh, I, no, can't you see how much I love you? I'm, I'm doing all this stuff for you. And they're like, yeah, but you're not spending quality time or with me. Or you're not telling me you love me every day. I need yeah. the words, Wh whatever it is. Yeah, right, exactly. And so different people need the different uh, right. types of language. Right. So And once you figure that out, it's like, oh, this makes better sense sense we can understand each other and try to speak each other's language more and because mrs Lori and i are hit and miss with that i'm <laughs> my top two are like probably uh physical touch and words of affirmation i'm a talker okay and she's more quality time and acts of service mm -hmm. so it's like we woo woo so once i got that it's like i will wash the dishes that will tell her you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> or whatever and my wife and i i, I would say also have different love languages because like yeah. i'm an acts of service like i'm like no I'm, I'm doing all this stuff and she's more quality time and it's like which you really have to carve out exactly yeah, yeah. Where it's yeah. Like, oh, i know I'm, I'm oh yeah okay we should probably also <laughs> hang out and just talk <laughs> right right yeah. it doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you're together mm -hmm. kind of a thing right yeah. Right, yeah. right 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 so it's good to recognize those and then you can don't you love that, that we have this scream dreams logo here and we're talking <laughs> about our love, love languages. languages no but i, kinda, <laughs> I, I, I love, love that we talk about this all the time like and and, and Nick, you you're a master of this right like exploring fear and like how it brings us together in an interesting way because mm -hmm. when you're scared we we talk about this a lot on the show like it's the closest you can be to understanding what another human is going through without mm -hmm. going through it yourself mm -hmm. but then everything comes up and you're kind of united in this thing that you've just gone through together right. so it is kind of a, a love journey in a way it kind of, it, fear is very bonding isn't uh -huh. it i mean because uh, when you're in a scary movie you grab somebody, right? Yeah. And they're grabbing you back, like you're holding on to each other. Yeah. And once you're through the movie and you survived, it's like, we did it, high five, <laughs> we, we made it. You know, that's a, that's a bonding thing, yeah. What scares you? Are you, are like you play sometimes these, like no, I, I well some are terrifying. I've, a lot of your monsters are, or creature character, nonverbal like characters misunderstood. are not. Yeah, misunderstood. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the one that got me, and I will never forget this because I'm a huge Buffy girl, like uh. growing up, Hush obviously was just like, for me, that was the first time Buffy scared me i loved the creatures in buffy i loved they did a great job of like always making the creatures really interesting and kind of compelling even if they were evil mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hush was the first time i was scared watching watching that show so i get i mean so yeah what does scare you then what what gets you mm -hmm. not much okay. uh because because I've, since i've been there and done that and played so many of them yeah. uh like because uh, uh oh, yeah <clears throat> for me it, if you if you put it's the nonverbal thing again when uh, when I don't understand what's happening, um, uh, the, what's unseen around the corner kind of a thing is mm -hmm. is scarier to me than like ah, in the face because yeah. I've done that before and it's like eh, you know yeah. <laughs> but um, but uh, the t the two characters I've played that scare me when I watch them and I and again I I, I can watch myself and go mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the most gruesome of things but. Uh, the pale man from Pan's Labyrinth. Great. Uh -huh. Again, nonverbal, didn't talk. He was just wanting to eat. Mm -hmm. Right? That's it. Yeah. And saying, so, the whys. It, why is he why doing this? this? That's not answered for me. That scares me. Like, uh -huh. if, I, if I knew why, maybe I could fix this yeah. uh -huh. and get out of here alive. But, but um, and then also the gentleman from Buffy. Also, that, that creeped me out when I watched that episode uh -huh. back, the Hush episode, because we were smiling. And doing dastardly. We were cutting out seven hearts and had to take them home in jars. And no one explained why. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
uh, what can we do to, to like not have this happen wasn't answered. So um, so that's frightening to me is when I, I, I'm a detail person and mm-hmm. I want everything like I want to jot off like my list for the day and making that monster stop warming my heart would be one of them. And I don't know how to check that off. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> that scares me. Exactly. Do you, do you have to come up with the why then to convincingly play a character? Well, I think with it? You, as an actor, you want you know you try to come up with your reasons. Like we, because uh, we only, I think the gentleman only, in Buffy only came around so many years. It yeah. wasn't every it wasn't every year. And once we had our seven hearts, we went away for a while, satisfied. So was that to keep like mm, where do we go? Where do we live? Was that to keep a life force going or so, of some way? Because we obviously are not mortal. So we must have some kind of mm, immortal need for these mortal hearts, and then they'll give out at some point, so we need to come and collect some more, I guess. Uh That was my idea. I don't know. (laughs) And the pale man, um, gosh, (laughs) in from Pan's Labyrinth, when little Ophelia comes down under into the, you know, uh, I played the fawn in that movie too. Yeah. So of course, oh yeah. Uh, uh, in Guillermo del Toro having me play both of those characters, I thought he was just a cheap ass who wanted to get two parts for, for you know, for the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> Partially true, but <laughs> but the other part was that the the fawn had kind of created all these tasks for Ophelia to pass so that she could become the princess and take her rightful place in the underworld mm-hmm. once again because she had forgotten her past. So, uh, so the pale man was one of those tests that he set up for her and he warned her you know about about him he's very dangerous muy peligroso <laughs> and uh, and whatever you, you, you don't eat anything while you're there so mm-hmm. here she gets down there and there's this lavish table of food set up and uh, she couldn't help herself and she grabbed a grape and that woke me up and then I come after her so you see um, I had I had withered away I have very saggy skin all that was like again that was a six hour makeup application oh boy all glued on to me um, with silicone saggy bits. And um, who did the makeup in that one? Uh, DDT Efectos Especiales from okay. Barcelona, Spain. Okay. And they won the Oscar for Best Makeup yeah. that year. Yeah. So they were delightful people. Uh, and they, um, so, uh, so he kind of, he, he, he awakens and, it, and is like, all he knows is that he's hungry. Again, when you're playing a bad guy, I don't think that twisting the mustache and being like, I want to be evil today. I don't think they think that. I think they think I want to survive like anybody else today and I'm just making some bad choices to do so. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. So uh, he's he's just kind of he wakes up hungry. And because of all the sagging bits, I thought, oh, he probably was robust and full at one point, but he Mm -hmm. fell asleep because no one came to visit him. And he's withered away. Now he's waking up because someone actually ate off of his table like they weren't supposed to do. And now it's like. Food time, food time. There she is. Ah, that's yeah. all he knew is it's like, it's like, you know, slice of beef. He didn't know any different. Right. Yeah. So, um, uh, so there's the threat is like, why wasn't answered. <laughs> and so here's this girl running from him. So that terrified me watching myself in, in that case too. So, um, yeah, but his, his backstory was just hunger. I think if, if anything, and he was just mm-hmm. trying to survive like anybody. And uh, unfortunately she happened to be, uh, what he thought was lunch. <laughs> right. <laughs> you you mentioned the the six hour process for that. Yeah. What was the most extensive makeup process yeah, I, you've gone I, this through? This is a, a very ask. a very good question that yeah. I get asked a lot because mm-hmm. everyone, how long did that take? Yeah. Um. Uh. So, the longest makeup application process ever for me on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, now, now the test makeups are going to be the longest. Sure. And the longest test makeup I think it was eleven hours yeah. once for, uh, might have been anyway, the first Hellboy movie. Um. Mm-hmm. Abe Sapien when I played the blue fish guy in that and then also I was a, I was a cameo at the end of quarant, uh, yeah, quarantine mm-hmm. I was the thin infected man oh okay the, the kind American of American remake of yeah. Rat all I was yeah, yeah. right exactly and all, all I was wearing was whitey tidy underwear but <laughs> yeah. I was also like an old I was afflicted with rabies that I self inflicted mm-hmm. and um, and was kind of I have an older fella so they and I had like a, a, a swollen forehead and like scraggly hair and and from head to toe, like uh, airbrushed or glued on sagging pectorals, bonier shoulders than my own. So it was all glued on and then edges blended. So that took artistry. Uh, mm-hmm. So the the test makeup for that was about 11 hours. And that's, you know, but so luckily with test makeup, you don't you're finish not filming and you don't have to film. You're not filming yeah. that Exactly. That's yeah. why they can take their time and be like, oh, precise. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. do you like that color? I don't know. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Right. That's the test makeup day. But yeah. then. Ongoing basis was was back to Abe Sapien in the first Hellboy movie. It was seven hours a day. 
Ooh, and so, then, so it's seven hours in the chair, and then you and go then and you shoot. work for twelve hours, yeah. and then yeah. you have two hours of cleanup. Uh, so it's oh, you a, have the removal. Oh, no, yeah, removal, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're back in it the next day. So I didn't sleep much that year. I bet. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but uh, but even those seven hours, uh, they're not building it from the ground up every day. Mm -hmm. They are pre-made prosthetically. Now, for instance, when I uh, Star Trek Discovery, uh, I'm an alien named Saru, with a uh, head and hands kind of makeup. And it looks very, very detailed. And, and I tell people that's only two hours a day. Now, how could that be only two hours a day? Because they do most of the work ahead of time. Mm -hmm. All the sculpting and molding and pre-painting is yeah, done. Yeah, they can paint the process. That's all done at the shop. Right. Yeah. Getting it onto me is the last step. Yeah. Right. So those makeup times can vary, you know, everywhere from two to seven hours. At depending. this point, do you have a, a time limit that you're like, no, I can't do this anymore? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. I mentioned, I, was, so much. I mentioned I was 63, right? Yeah. <laughs> So, um, with, with, yeah, I, the older I get, the older the process gets, I think. But uh -huh. so I'm not just I'm not saying a flat no to, mm -hmm. to a time limit. It, um, but I am getting more picky. Uh, the, the, does the story sing to me? Does the character sing to me? Um, and do I really, really want to be a part of this? Is it a story that I need to help tell? Mm -hmm. uh, that I'm, I'm considering that way more now than before. It's like it's a gig; it pays. I'll do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say like Jack Frost too, which is which you weren't oh, in makeup for. I was, but I'll always bring it up just because <laughs> I remember watching that movie and be like, "It's fucking Doug Jones, dude." Bless your heart. <laughs> Bless your heart raft. for even knowing that. My <laughs> Ooh, Jack Frost uh, but, yeah. 2, the Revenge of the Killer Moon I Snowman. actually, well, we have a game later. I Is thought that... I thought about throwing that in there. Oh, you should have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a classic. So, Did you? <laughs> oh, it's so, in there. Ah, so, <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, uh, so like that, uh, but I'm, I'm pursuing more human characters now. Yes, yeah. And yeah. In, because, of, because of my history and my resume and what I'm known for, a lot of those characters, human characters that are, are seeking me and all, uh, the offers I'm getting, are like a, de a demon in human form mm. or a dastardly uh, serial killer or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting that a lot. And um, are you fine with that or do you also want to play I'm, Again, more? Again, it's like I'm getting a little picky with that. Yeah, sure. uh, I'm not a lover of blood on the wall splatter, mm. you know, uh, torture porn. I'm yeah. not really a fan of that. I'm more, it, when I do horror or dark movies, I'd like it to have a redemptive quality to it, mm. whatever that is. Did we learn a lesson? Did the did good win over evil? Yeah. I, li I, like, I like that kind of storytelling better. Yeah. Is there like a dream like kind of character creature or otherwise you'd like to take on or like Well, I, as far as as far as like anything non-human goes, uh, I think I've played them all. Yeah. <laughs> to, to, yeah. to my to my yeah. satisfaction, yeah. Uh but <laughs> what what's left would be I I, I was uh, if you asked me this a few years ago, I would have said a vampire, but I I've, I've played several well, now. Yeah. What we, what we do in the shadows, right? Yeah. That'll not on what we do in the shadow. I love him. I love him. Yeah. Uh, and then I've also was uh, a, a, an, an ancient vampire on uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, The Strain, if you remember mm -hmm. that show, yeah. uh, recurring in about six episodes. And then I also, um, I have a, and I finished, com we completed a Nosferatu movie remake. Oh. Uh, years ago that it still is not out yet we just it finally got through all the post-production and we had a couple of test screenings at, at conventions i was at in detroit uh, and dallas oh went nice. super well and the audiences really responded well so it's done and ready but distribution isn't with us yet yeah. so i'm not sure what state it's in and we're, we're running you know who's chasing us is Robert Eggers' Nosferatu. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's what I first I thought you were talking with about. Bill Skarsgård like, in, in the role that I played. Yeah, so I, okay, he's younger and hotter. We got to get ours out first. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want I don't want to be the the copycat. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so hopefully that'll be out this year. Still, uh -huh. I hope so. Yeah, because it's done and ready. A lot of vampire stuff lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Last and I, and Voyage I, of the Demeter uh -huh. and right, right. Uh, I'm Renfield. here for it. I'm here for it. I love the vampires. I love the vampires. Yeah, yeah. So. um and with, with Nosferatu, too, our version is is kind of an interesting mix of the old movie from 1922 mm -hmm. and the new movie, or, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the new one we're making. So all, all new actors, but we were filmed on green screen and combined with the old movie. So they, they created backdrops from the old film okay. that I got to play in the same environment Max Schreck did when he played Nosferatu. Oh, <laughs> and we might have had, uh, and, but with dialogue and sound. So there's it's a more completed movie now. Because mm -hmm. silent films, there's a lot missing, you know. Mm -hmm. what yeah. really, you know, you'll see people doing this and, and then you'll, a dialogue card comes up that says, yes, mother. 
<laughs> you said way more than that, right? Yeah. So, so our movie does flesh out all that, and it stays very oh, true cool. to the original film, though. Yeah. So I'm really, really happy with it. And it's in black and white. Ours is. Oh, cool. And I believe that Robert Eggers is in color, and he might have taken some, you know, Robert Eggers liberties. I don't know. I don't sure. know. We'll find. Out. He's a great filmmaker, so I can't wait to see his. Yeah. And also, I can't wait for ours to be seen. Mm-hmm. No, well, kind of, there's no reason we can't have both. Well, the thing with stories like that, I think, is also like they're 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 classics for a reason. Any sort of like archetypal trope, right, right, is is something that can be reinterpreted by different people, and it and it looks different when different people interpret it. Mm-hmm. You know, your version of Santa Claus, for example, is not going to be <laughs> James' version won't be. of Santa Claus or my version of Santa Claus. You know, they're all going to be different. And that extends to any to demons, to creatures, to just people. Yeah. You know, even if you're, you know, uh, your Macbeth is different from someone else's Macbeth. Right, 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 right. You know? We all put our own spin and our own personality into it. And yeah, it's experience. important not to just do an impersonation of the person who had right. the role beforehand. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Literally, I was just talking about this with Chelsea last night because we are taking an acting class right now and, and the instructor mentions that we're doing these scenes don't try to just in, like uh, Mimic. imitate yeah. the yeah. person who's done yeah. it and she had the perfect example yeah think of um, the Joker just all the different classic Jokers iterations of it all True. completely unique spins mm. based on the personal actor mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. It, it's never too late to make a, a classic uh, version of a, an old character yeah. yeah, is I, that one you'd want to do? I feel like you would be a no Joker. Joker. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather do Riddler. Be honest with you. Ooh, yeah, oh, Riddler. Yeah. And I, yeah. <laughs> if yeah. I'm in the Batman world, yeah. Now you remember, I was in Batman Returns. By the way, I was one right. of Penguin's sidekicks. Oh, uh, he, okay. he hung out with the Red Triangle Circus gang. Yes, yeah. Yes, and I was right. uh, I was Thin Clown in the credits. You which, hung out with Danny. Let's be honest. A little bit. Uh, hung out with Danny a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we were sat in makeup chairs next to each other. Oh, cool. And uh, and he called me. Kid. How you doing, kid? <laughs> this tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was looking up at me. How, How you old doing, were kid? you at the time? How old were you? Uh, I was. Oh, yeah, good question. I was 31 oh, wow. while we were filming that. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are, are you the, the, I know you said you're the youngest of four brothers. Are you the tallest? No, oh, no, no. My, my tall, uh, I, my tallest brother is six six. Oh wow! And I am six three. I was six three and a half. I think I've lost an inch somewhere. Sure. Yep, that I happens. Might be in the car. <laughs> uh, but um, and then my other two brothers were started at six three. So who knows what they are now? Because okay. we're all older <laughs> fellas now. <laughs> and do they all work in entertainment? No, or? no. We're all so different from each other. My oldest brother Bobby is a uh, he is a PhD in molecular biology. He was oh, a college wow. professor for okay. years. He's retired now. Brother Tommy uh, is a marketing genius. He was he was with uh, he's been with in the corporate world from one company. Yeah. To, uh, he actually worked with Hallmark for a while. Oh. Wow! In their in their ambassador cards division. Uh-huh. Uh, but and then uh, he's retired now as well. And then Brother Richie is a uh, clinical. Uh, I'm sorry, is a licensed therapist in the state of Indiana. Wow! So, very, yes, very so, different. So he's psychology boy. Yeah. And nice. then I'm actor boy. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, but I I can glean a lot from them. In, yeah. uh, I I've used all of them, my, my brothers, in character studies and uh, and uh, helped them get me on film in in a character that that draw. My brother Bobby especially, he's the scientist, so I played a lot of mad scientists. Yeah. Or even on Star Trek Discovery with all of my uh, science talk as Saru. Oh gosh, those scripts. <laughs> You've memorized dialogue before, yes, right? Yes. Yep. When you're memorizing science fiction dialogue in blocks of, of with terminology that doesn't exist in the real world mm-hmm. and blah, 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 names and ranks and blah, 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 and orders and oh my gosh! <laughs> so I channel my brother Bobby because he talks like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> have you have you uh, ever felt? Do you feel support from them in your career path, or have you oh, ever yeah. felt like? A lesser than or that they've ever looked down on you no, anything well, like that well you know when you'll grow up in indiana and you sure. say i want to be in showbiz it's mm-hmm. like great what else you want to do yeah. Yeah. yeah what do you uh, really want to do really, yeah, yeah. Right. that's that's a cute idea uh-huh. uh, <laughs> uh but you know and, and um but but as I've as I've come up, um, you know, when they would see me on their TV, or I'll give my mom is the best example. God rest her soul. She passed away about ten years ago. But but uh, she was you sent out the Christmas family newsletter every year and would call, oh. and would refer to me as a struggling actor. In long into my career. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh god. Doug's still a struggling actor out in L.A. <laughs> And I was like, she just, and, you know, and she didn't really understand what I was doing or how, or, or what, how much I was making. She didn't understand. No, no, no it's fine. I didn't want to correct her. So you know, at least put working actor, mom. <laughs> Something. Yeah. I, I send her letters like going, hey, watch me on CBS tonight. I'll be blah, whatever. And she would tune in and go, that's cute. So. 
my family's but no, like that too. It was at it was at the beauty parlor. She was getting her hair did. Okay, she was getting her hair done, and and uh, the 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 um, tattooed nose ring girl that was working on her uh-huh. was talking uh, with another girl uh, in the shop about oh it's got about um, Hellboy. The, yeah. uh, the Melboy movies. I think it was after 2008 when the second one came out. And my mom's like, Hellboy, I think my son's in that. <laughs> and and so the lady's like, who's your son? Uh, oh, he, okay, he played um, a, a fish blue guy. And the girl goes, the girl goes, your son is Doug Jones. And my mom was like, you know, you know his name. I'm like, yes. Oh my gosh. So all the girls in the shop are like, oh, you go to Doug. This is Doug Jones's mom. And so she was, so she was like, well, you know, kind of taken with it. I hope the newsletter changed after that. Yes. It did? yes. What when, did when, it say? Uh, well, fish I mean, actor. My esteemed son. My esteemed yeah. fish actor son. <laughs> Critically acclaimed son. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, but so, that, but she. Uh, and then I was at her house once after that, uh, in, and uh, visiting in Indianapolis where we lived. She was there, um, and um, she had a, a, a maintenance man coming over to fix the air conditioning. And when I was visiting, and uh, and by then I had given her like I had been doing the convention, so I gave her mm-hmm. like a copy of all my eight by tens. There were like thirty of them. From <laughs> yeah. I signed all of them to mom, and I wrote notes on all of them. And I gave her as a package one time before this, <laughs> so. Uh, she, the, 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 the air conditioning guy came, I was sitting in the dining room working on something. And then, um, all of a sudden she comes into the dining room going, Oh, he's in here. (laughs) Oh no. So here comes this maintenance guy, Mr. Jones. It's so nice to meet you. Hi. I'm like, nice to meet you too. I'm looking at mom. What? (laughs) And, uh, he's, I really loved you in the, uh, fantastic four movies. I'm like, Oh, 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 okay. So mom had taken one of my eight by tens, the Silver Surfer, yeah, <laughs> and left it on the counter where they would be settling up the bill. Oh, <laughs> oh a my subtle God. little thing, just to leave it there as a visual. And so he's like, they're they're doing, he's writing his her uh, you know invoice and whatnot. Going, where'd you get that? <laughs> oh, oh, that's that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> I love your mom. That's I love amazing. my mom too. <laughs> oh gosh! And so it, well, he's here. And that's why. And then that leads up to. Oh, here he is in the dining room. Yeah. Did she get a good discount? Yeah. Right. I would, no, I would hope so. <laughs> it didn't work for so me. Uh, I, I, got, I got pulled over by a cop in Beverly Hills, uh, and. <laughs> For, for, like, do you know I, 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 I might have rolled through a stop sign. Let's just say, and uh, so um, so the, co- the the police officer asked me, "Where are you headed?" And I said, "I'm going headed to a costume fitting. It was for a commercial mm-hmm. years and years ago." And uh, and so he goes back to his car, runs all my stats, and comes back and says, "Were you the Silver Surfer?" <laughs> and I said, "Oh, this is it. Yes, yes, I was. Oh, it's really great. Well, here's your ticket, and give it." A- <laughs> I feel like here in LA it that doesn't fly. It didn't work like, in no. Burbank, but not Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah. Like, it'll work on you know on the highway in Oklahoma, but not here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Right, 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 right. That's okay. When I my grandmother and she also recently passed, and and I was very close with her and adored her, and and she's an incredible, incredible woman. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, we were I was um home just before with her and took her to church. She's very religious, and then we got breakfast, mm-hmm. and um you know I was saying something about something I had to do for taxes this year, and she goes, oh. So you do make money doing that? Oh and, heavens! And I was like, yeah, yeah, like it's my full t- my full time job. Yeah. And um, and she was like, oh, that's so good. You know, I always thought you were, what's that thing French people are destitute? No, bohemian. <laughs> that, 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 oh that's right, what she said. like you're living on someone else's couch, and <laughs> yeah, <you're> burning incense. <laughs> <Destitute>, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Oh, and I it love it. the sweetest it. thing because she is so supportive. Of like, course. We wrote letters back and forth. <laughs> yeah. but she, she didn't care what I did as long right. as I was happy, but she really genuinely did not oh, think no. I, I made a living to That's just it. precious, isn't it? I, know. I don't know what she thought I was doing in my, my free time. But. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Aww. Oh, Rumble. Oh, I, I hope she's with us today. I think she is. You what do I feel? What is that? Does is it, it feel like warm? It's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Kind Comforting. Of like extra sugar in your coffee. You know? Yes. Mm. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, I think it's here. For a side. Oh, here I am. Great to time. see you guys again. 
Doug. Uh, it's Barbara. How are you? It's, you didn't know well, who was coming in I today. Didn't know, I didn't. It was shocking. We've known each other yes. for a while. Love yes. you. Oh. Love you too. Well, I'm so glad to see you here with us today. It was a nice surprise. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys were talking earlier about all the, you know, different roles that people have played and what do you want to play? And you wanted to play a vampire at one time and you did get to yeah, play I got a vampire. I've played several now. Yeah. You yeah, played yeah, several. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm not really a creature actor, but I I actually want to play creatures. So oh, really? can we switch? Because I want to <laughs> play more creatures and you want to play more humans. You know, humans. Yeah, yeah. But I really enjoyed playing a vampire too. And when I did Jacob's Wife, ah. that was one of the things that I was just saying that I wanted to play one of those classic characters mm -hmm. of horror. Yeah. You know, and I got to play that and mm -hmm. manifested know, it. That 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 was uh I, I wasn't in like makeup or anything, but I got to wear the teeth and yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. And I, assume something that was not I, quite human. Quite, yeah, yeah, quite, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not quite me, and like superhuman in a way. Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, vampires are more self-actualized people in a way. They're stronger and faster. more confident and faster mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. get so more that. sleep. Get more sleep. <laughs> they do. They, they do. Yeah. Especially like during the winter time. They yeah. Must yeah. Get... yeah. Right. When the... Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or no, or no yeah. The summertime, summertime when, the, when the days are longer. Yeah. yeah. But actually, when you're saying that, I, I I was thinking, did I sleep in somewhere or someplace that was different? I didn't actually do that when I was when... in Jacob's wife. No, she I didn't. I slept with my husband. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> well, you were also kind of like becoming a vampire. Like you were like I was still becoming yeah. a vampire. Oh, uh, right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Vampire lore goes all over the place. It does. It? It's kind of pick it? and choose. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. some, some vampires are burned by the sun, some turn sparkly. I know. I'm just <laughs> saying. That's a whole other option. That's a whole other. I know. Yeah, that's a whole other movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right there. Mm. Cool. Well, uh, we're going to play a game today. Oh, we are. I, f I figured the bowl meant something. I have a bowl. <laughs> have a bowl. She just brought a, a treat for us. Yeah. 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 So, Hope you okay. like paper. <laughs> Actually, you know I was going to be here today because during the break we were saying, okay, how many roles have you played? Yeah. We, we just don't know. I don't, Do we? I, I'm not quite sure. I look at IMDb myself. They're like, oh, I, I was in that too. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many. And after a while, you kind of forget, right? You do. You do. Um, you do. But we remembered a few of them. Oh, dear. So we have a few different movies in here. Okay. And we're going to play this game where we're going to pick uh, one piece of paper out of the bowl, all of us. Mm -hmm. Oh. And then, w based on the character that you played in that movie, we're going to come up with our own little version of what that movie is. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Catherine? Yeah. Catherine, even though I'm the sign barb, she <laughs> creates most of the game. Oh, <laughs> so is that Catherine. is that correct, Catherine? Because I haven't played this game yet. Yes. Yeah, we played it with uh, Greg Nicotero mm -hmm. previously. So basically, we will all go around and pick a film, and we will have to create either you will have to create a character creature or otherwise that could live in all of the worlds or a story that is like the hybrid universe of all of these worlds oh. okay so is he going to is, we'll help you don't worry is well, well, four, four titles we're working with then <laughs> well it's yeah. four different characters and then but he's going to start us off with talking about what well, this scenario yeah. is either mm -hmm. with the character or with a scene you yeah. we might need a little direction. basically if a studio bought all these properties and was like, let's make a crossover sequel to all of them. All of them. Yeah. What would that look like? I'm rolling. Are you tired of cooking? Cool. You don't have to anymore. Factor has delicious, ready to eat meals that are chef crafted, dietitian approved, and sent straight to your door. They are. With over 35 meal options to choose from each week, you'll never get bored. With midday snacks, smoothies, wellness shots, you'll be on your A game all day long. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you like Factor? I love Factor, especially when we're doing things like this podcast taping three in one day. Mm -hmm. I can just throw it in the microwave and I'm good to go. And it keeps me on like, you know, my health regimen. Yeah. I don't have time to cook. Never. I don't have time to cook at all. You don't even have time to be here right now. We don't know how we got you here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it starts to weigh on you when every time you talk to someone, they're like, I know you're really busy and you don't have time. I'm like, yeah, oh, God. But that's why I have Factor, uh, so I can eat at least and keep myself alive. Exactly. Because Factor is way less expensive than takeout, and it takes so much less time than waiting at a drive-thru. Yes, without Factor, James would actually be dead meat. I'm... All you have to do is eat up the meal for two minutes and you're all set. That's right. You don't have to prep it. You don't have to cook it. 
You don't have to clean it up. Just toss it in the trash. Get out of there. That's exactly right. So if you would like some Factor Meals, head to factormeals.com slash screamdreams50 and use code screamdreams50 to get 50% off. That's why it's, that's why it's 50. It's a code <laughs> screamdreams50 at factormeals.com. Uh, and yeah, slash screamdreams50 to get 50% off. That's right. Screamdreams50 Factor Meals. You won't regret it. You know what's a nightmare? Dehydration. (sighs) Yeah. You know what's an even worse nightmare? Plastic pollution. That's why we love Liquid Death and their evil mission to murder your thirst and kill plastic pollution. That's right. Their aluminum cans are as metal as they get. So (laughs) pick some up today because we all need something uh, refreshing to reach for when we wake up from a nightmare. It's true. Cheers. (laughs) <laughs> I'll pick first. Okay. Okay. Sure. No cheating. I like that you're adding the sound. Yeah, I'm not looking. <laughs> that ASMR. Okay, I have Hocus Pocus. Right. And yeah. you were talking about Hocus Pocus earlier, and that's right. a Billy. movie that I'm familiar with. Billy Butcherson, mm-hmm. the, Billy Butcherson. the Goofy yeah. Zombie. Mm-hmm. The Goofy Zombie, yes. So yes. Lose he, your head. Before zombies were cool. I, was, I, was, I yeah. love yeah. him. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. yeah. me too. I loved him dearly. Okay, my mouth, turn? Yeah, mouth sewn turn. shut for, mouth for a lot shut. of it. For a lot of it, yeah. For a lot of it, and yeah. I finally opened it up at the at the end, near the end, and was like, oh. okay. So I picked uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, oh, which we talked oh. about earlier, as the silent uh, gentleman who just smiled and tore hearts out and mm-hmm. floated around. Okay, so terrifying. Okay. That was a zombie that, and a silent gentleman. That was yeah. the one so that won far. them their Emmy, right? Was that episode? Well, it was, it was nominated. Nominated. Yeah, was, okay, yeah. Emmy nominated. I, I never watched Buffy, but I have seen that episode. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, thank I think you. that and was it Once More with Feeling? Is the musical. musical. Oh, yeah, this, I feel like those are the two, the two fan favorites. Yeah. Yes. I, mm-hmm. I love a good musical vampirism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pan's Labyrinth. Okay. Okay. Really, that's your, I mean, to me, that's like. I the, don't know. That's your seminal role. I, I think it was the perfect movie. Why. It was like it was know, history, relationship drama. It yeah. was fantasy, fairy tale, and a little bit of horror. A little it was bit. Very yeah. scary to me. Yeah. You were yeah. really yeah. scary to me, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's funny how the well, human as, uh, parts are are the scarier parts of that movie. They're yeah. the monsters. Yeah. Well, as this ones. character, yeah. mm. or how do you do that? The pale man. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, he was yeah. scary for sure. Yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> like really. But a Guillermo del Toro thumbprint is that the monsters are his heroes and the. The, there's a human that's gone off the rails. Right. Yeah, because yeah. they're it's yeah. like fascist. That, really, they're, right? they're, yeah. they're they're the usually the monster in his yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's Shape true. of yeah. Water is like Shape of Water, right? Mm-hmm. Like Michael Shannon. <laughs> Michael Shannon was a great. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. oh my god! Yeah. 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 All right, and the last one is the Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle. Oh! Okay, now the lesser yeah. lesser known. Okay. Uh, uh, I <laughs> I was I had a cameo in that. Okay. Uh, uh, our lead actress. Oh gosh, her name is going to escape me. A young blonde, beautiful girl. Um, and we could look it up. You could look it up. You're sure. We, we uh, have our team back there to look it yeah. up. Crack it. team. Yes. Crack yeah, team yeah, on yeah. it over there. Yeah, yeah. She was also in Can Coyote Ugly, I think she was. Uh, oh. And mm. Anyway, she was a an FBI agent mm-hmm. who was going on an adventure. Uh, it was called The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. So, uh, and I was uh, one of three of her co- FBI cohorts that got kidnapped and turned into vegetables. Oh. I was a carrot. There was a potato and a beet. So we were all, so when you meet us in the movie, we are in our vegetable state. Okay. Okay. We have well, a do we have a name? Renee Russo. Re, uh, uh, not Renee Russo. She played. Uh, she was. She was uh, Natasha. Piper. Uh, Piper. Piper. Lori. Parabo. Piper Parabo. Oh, Piper oh Parabo. okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Lovely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So I was. I was. I was the carrot. Okay. And it's, so yeah, we, we should clarify yeah. when you say you were in a vegetative state. Uh, no, you right. Can't. But, but we were. We were kind of like this <laughs> and, and strapped down to chairs in a row. Okay. And then at it the end. Double on time, I like yeah. that we have a vegetable right. in our little scenario. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, exactly. okay. So, so we have a carrot. carrot. Oh, we have a uh-huh. carrot, the FBI agent. And okay. We have an FBI and I'm, agent. I morph back into my human self by the end when the spell yeah. is broken. Okay. 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 So there's that. We have a. Uh, a zombie. Focus, focus. Yeah, a zombie. A fun, goofy zombie. We have a terrifying, silent. Heart terror outer smiler yes, guy. Yes, oh yeah, okay. Yes. And then and we have Pan's Labyrinth. So we have the pale man. We mm-hmm. also have a fawn in that yes, that I played. Yes, yes. Oh sure, yeah. Yeah, that's well, let's right. Not neglect that's that. A, that's okay. that's a, so it's five characters now. And then and then <laughs> uh, uh, Rocky and Bull. Yeah, okay. Is that all of them? Do we yes, get them? That's yes. all of them. Yeah. What did I have? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. 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 Mm. There's okay. a lot there. Okay. So. So. <laughs> so. Uh, I. 
I feel like we shouldn't put this on our guests. I got an idea. To like start off. Idea. Okay. I got yeah. an idea. Okay. You go so ahead. You start off. so uh, <laughs> Billy is yeah. awoken from the dead again. Yes. And uh, the Sanderson sisters are are in charge of him again. They're controlling him. Yeah. Uh, and, and they say that he must go to the pale man's table, and they say don't don't, don't eat, anything. eat anything. But okay. when he gets there, there's a carrot. Okay. There's and a carrot. the carrot oh. starts talking to him and asking for help. Because he's really an FBI agent. That's right. Yes. Right. Who, who was investigating oh. the pale man? The pale man for for the feds. Yeah. Uh, yes. Before he got turned yes. into a carrot. Right. Mm-hmm. And then and then you know, in this world, there the, these zombies who come back from the dead are also very hungry. Mm-hmm. So um, the mm-hmm. zombie kind of comes back and looks at that carrot and says, "I want to eat that carrot." Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the carrot's talking, so he's like conflicted. Mm. Sure. You know, you know. Mm-hmm. it's like they eat something that's talking. It's like when you yeah. visit a, a farm and the chickens, you hear them cluck. And you're like, ah, oh, shit. And the pale man kind of wants to eat the zombie, probably. Yeah. Uh-huh. So everyone's very so, hungry for each other. And yeah. then, of course, in comes you know the silent, smiley, hush creatures. Right. And they're try and they mime to Billy that it is okay to eat living things because they take hearts every year they're like trying to explain to him through sign language don't right. feel bad right just eat the carrot just yeah. eat the carrot right yeah that's really a human we have right. a lot of, a lot of characters who can't talk but you know they can uh, communicate okay, through your expressive this, acting they, they yeah well, uh, billy, billy butcherson does talk though. he does yeah, yeah he's, he's kind of got a dusty voice mm-hmm. okay so so yeah. He, yeah. he can give some verbal uh so gentlemen pale man yeah. maybe maybe he's going to take over and what would he say to everybody about What's been going on? We have guide things. Oh my gosh, mm. I, I think he'd say, "Can't we all just get along and not <laughs> yeah. eat each other?" I think maybe, yeah. maybe that's where Billy would. He'd be the sensible one of all of them. I yes. think. Okay. I think he would be. I all think right. this is also a good advertisement for Factor Meals. <laughs> 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 you know, because if, <laughs> if Factor is late or you get the meal that you don't want, you can always eat the carrots that are undead. Mm-hmm. And um, no, but like you want factor meals, you want you want to order factor meals mm-hmm. with what the discount code Scream Dreams fifty because <laughs> yeah. Scream Dreams five zero because what's the five zero fifty for fifty percent off. Oh, oh, we get half yeah. off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yes, you yeah. want Sorry, that's right. You <laughs> want to eat the factor meals? Hashtag Scream Dreams. Five zero. Five zero. Um, because because that way you don't have to eat. You don't have carrots. to eat the people, or and the that, zombies don't have to eat the brains. That's how it's oh resolved. My gosh. So right. I through SpawnCon, so Billy yes. just uh, breaks or, out the factor meals and gives one goes, to the thank pale. God, I have and gives my, the pale man and he some says food. Some and he food. says thank yeah. God I have this discount code because now I get fifty yeah. percent off, so I can have double the amount of factor meals and now, feed now everybody. Are factor meals delivered like a DoorDash kind of yeah, a thing? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, no, they're pre made meals. Pre made. You sign up for it. You simply heat up. And it, they in come two every minutes, week, right? With no so, mess. I, what, yeah, no I cooking think, required. And, and no cooking and no cleaning, and you just throw it away. She's She's right. Right. You know what we could yeah. do, too? We could we could all gather together and eat yeah. the delivery boy. Ooh. Right. Oh! Right, because he's yeah. probably. Yeah. He's, meals. That's the third Don't act twist. The delivery boy. That's their slogan. Factor meals, so good, you'll want to eat, eat the, the delivery, delivery boy. boy. There you go. There's our slogan. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Factor this that was a really good story. Macros. I think we could actually make this, this movie. Would, I, just, right? I would watch this movie. <laughs> I would Someone would right? fund it. This, uh, Factor <laughs> Meals. Good, if you like our you, the sponsor, we'll make you a movie. There you go. Yeah. Bring yeah. it in under two and we'll get it made. <laughs> right. We already have an advertiser. It's great. It's great. This is great. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. okay. Well. Um, I want to be in your Hallmark movie uh, too. So we didn't talk about that. that. On, uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, but but that that's another dream of mine, Barbara. Yeah, to work it, together is to yes. work together in a Hallmark. Because movie. when I first met you, I was like, oh, I I know Doug Jones. I wonder if he knows me. And you were like, of course I know you. Barbara, and I was like, Crampton, are you Barbara? kidding me? No, but I was like, Doug Jones. You know, when I first met you, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so yeah, so yeah, you know, hey, you know what? There, there's always in, in Hallmark movies. There's always like a, a, a widower or a widow, mm-hmm. and if I'm the widower, she could make. Uh, we could do flashbacks. We've we could talked do, about ooh. it. Yes, we I could talked be the about one it. Who yeah, away. yeah. And, yes. But we could have. But we could. I could, could be you in could, your screen dreams. Yes. But you could show up and yes. talk to me and give yeah. me advice. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. I have been wanting to make Doug the dad in a Hallmark Christmas yeah. movie <laughs> for some time to make this dream a reality. We're putting it out into the ether. We're putting it out there. 
maybe awesome. it will happen. And to play I, with Barbara Crampton on screen would be a dream for uh, me. Uh, I'll It'll play, be a scream I'll dream I'll play your dead me. wife, yes. Okay, <laughs> yes. Right. that's the scream part. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yes, I'll be screaming from, you know, the, the depths of the, de yes. the, be the beyond. Okay. From beyond. From beyond. You know. Okay. Yes. Which exactly. is where you must return to now. Uh-oh. I, I, oh. I must return to oh. the place from whence I came. Oh, so this magical entrance is going to be a magical yeah. exit? That's right. Oh. See you later. Oh. oh. There she goes. Well, that was something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, magic of effects. Yeah. Yeah. You're used to that. Magic of Barb, uh -huh. I, would, I would say at this yes. point, too. Yeah. What's next for you? I mean, yeah. that's what I mean. When you when you are the Oscar winning, <laughs> like what what's next? <laughs> what's more? Well, that that's why I was able to to say like maybe now is the time to start phasing out the rubber bits and the mm -hmm. rubber and the glue. I've been exposed to a lot of toxic chemicals. Oh my <laughs> god! Oh god. I'd love to just like yeah be healthier, uh, <laughs> but um. And then when Star Trek Discovery, uh, our final season five, will just be airing in uh, April. April mm -hmm. 4th is the start date for a weekly, weekly episodes on Paramount+. Plus. And, uh, and that's our final season. So with that being over now, too, it's like, oh, well, now I'm not living in Toronto nine months out of the year with rubber bits on. So mm -hmm. maybe I can take that off and be like, oh. And what we do in the shadows, uh, uh, season six is up. filming right now, and that's their final season. I'll be back for a few more yeah. episodes. Mm -hmm. And once, and I've been through four different looks on that: some rubber and glue, some not, some just oh. me with a wig. So I don't know what stage we're going to be in for season six. I don't mm -hmm. know what I'm going to look like just yet. So, but once that's over, then that'll be over. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, huh? Well, then what's next? Is the great question, yeah. right? So more humans, yes. <laughs> uh, and and. You asked about a character that I haven't played that I would love to, and I think I would like to be a benevolent, uh, helpful angel, oh. whether their wings or not. Might be like a Clarence from, uh, yeah. you know, what was that movie? Uh, um, uh, uh, Christmas movie. Jimmy Stewart. It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. Yes. yes. <laughs> Clarence from It's a Wonderful Life, mm -hmm. or, uh, or 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 something more more visually stunning that has wings and and uh, and with a glow around me. I don't know. Yeah, uh, but I did play an angel, the angel of death, in oh. Hellboy Two: The Golden a little bit Army. Different, yeah. Which was w wings, but I had like a very, <laughs> very yeah. frightening face. Uh, so, but yeah, so something, something kind and gentle. I think I you'd make a great benevolent I angel. Think so thank too. Thank you. I thank you. Think so too. I don't know what in, but yeah. You I'm, are an angel, Doctor. Oh, thank see you, how you for are. being with us today. This oh, is it has like been such, my pleasure. Such a light, truly. Well, thank you for well, speaking finding... of light. Oh my gosh, oh. we almost forgot to ask. That's right. What? You want to ask it? What? Oh, yeah. What? Well, on this, what? on this podcast, we talk about fears, and and you said that you you don't have a lot that scares you but mm. for the things that do is there a nightlight in your life something that keeps you going something that you look forward to uh every day when you wake up and that just drives you oh right i uh, well that would be my, my the lovely mrs lori we were married for it'll be 40 years in april 40 years oh, old people say that <laughs> we were married for 40 years you gotta <laughs> use that voice um yeah uh uh no uh, the older we get together uh, the more we're like really, really happy that the other one's there. Oh, so that, that gives me a reason to wake up for sure. That's for fantastic. Sure. Yeah. That and my faith in God and we share that together as well. So yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Good. That. Well, thank you for being, this, oh my gosh, I wish you were here with us every time. You're just <laughs> oh, the best. You really, the really are. I we, love you so you much. You get bored of my stories. No, <laughs> I don't minute. think so. Yeah, sure. I don't think so. I think we could talk to you for <laughs> days. Aww, if you, you liked this interview, please like, comment, subscribe, mm. write in about your favorite Doug Jones film or creature or just it, the characters he's played out of makeup because he's also such a brilliant actor. We've all, right. I think we could say this, we worked together, the three of us, on a small film recently, we which we're really excited about. I think it's called If It Bleeds. They announced something. If It Bleeds today. is the, yeah. is the and it, uh, it's an anthology of three shorts. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and, that uh, we all are involved in in little bits. I got to play a, 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 a wacko a, a doctor, uh, right? Yes. Cosmetic surgeon. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes, and you don't have prosthetics. I did not have prosthetics. No. I just looked kind of off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you can subscribe to our Patreon. We is that, or you can become a patron. A patron. A patron on Patreon. On Patreon. You had it right the first time. Uh, to <laughs> 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 uh, where we put extended episodes, ad-free episodes, all sorts of fun stuff. You can. I'm missing the last one. I think. Ring the bell. Thank you. You got it. You can do that just uh, to make sure you uh, get the new uploads in your feed. Yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. uh, but until next time, I am. Catherine Corcoran. And I'm James A. Janice. I don't know which one we're looking at. One I guess this one. <laughs> Be sure to leave the light on. Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs>
Ha 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 